some of the Hong Kong work is, uh, you know, readily available uh, here in the UK, but uh, others not so much. I, I'm not sure the Right and Wrong's ever got a proper nope. UK release. I don't never, think. never got, never got a no. UK release. No. Mm. Yeah, got used to Dragon, Dragon Dynasty released it in the US, but never got a UK release, which is a shame. Cause I think it yeah. would have sold pretty well when oh, that yeah. initial Hong Kong Legends boom mm. was going. Yeah. It was released so. as Above the Law, by the way, in America, as the alternate uh, uh, yeah. title of the movie, but it was the Hong Kong version they released. Yeah, so. I think that's the UK video title as well, Above yeah. the Law. It was released on video, but never did. Yeah. Uh, so, we're flashing back to Don Neam's issues. <laughs> you know, the, pa- the abandonment issues, you know, Anna leaving him, <laughs> you know, and that... You know, it, it's not deep psychology, but the, then again, if you really want to look at it closely, it's it, it's true for many people in this world that they can snap based on these kind of issues, you know? Yeah. Uh, and this was also, all of this, uh, the, the flashback that occurs and all that, all gone from Hong Kong version. Nothing, yeah. That's... Nothing. I think Stingray's first scene is... Well, it's the rape scene, but yeah, he doesn't appear uh, until uh, the uh, parking uh, garage uh, scene that we're going to see shortly. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the thing by by losing a lot of that, it does take away from the from that from the character. It's sort of, you know, yeah. it, sort of, it takes takes some of the depth away, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's he's the best thing about this film, no doubt. Yeah. I'd say, I'd say. He's, he's dedicated. I I you know you laugh, you don't laugh at this, you laugh with it, but it's also chilling. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and the actors have explained in the interview we're going to reference that they had lots of fun doing this, and uh, you know it, it, they they have they they're not sh- ashamed at all because they know people appreciate it for what it is. You know what mm. I mean? People are not well. So I'm sure some people are laughing at it, but the majority of the people are definitely not. Uh, d- despite this scene being funny when he sprays his hair with red, <laughs> and you know what? I would have loved if it was white spray instead, so he could have had like a wolf look and shit like that. That would be so sweet. Mrs. Frankenstein. <laughs> but you... uh, th- this was also gone from the Hong Kong version, not even this sweet scene. So, what are you going to do? We've seen some uh, recent pictures of uh, Don Neum. He actually He's looking st- good, man. He still looks pretty good. much like this. You yeah. Know, he's still really in fa- you know, terrific shape. You know, for, you know, for a guy who's probably in his like, 50s, probably, I suppose. The but yeah, he's, room. He's like, <laughs> I think he just works as like, a personal you know, trainer and stuff. So. Absolutely. Well, um, We'll talk a little, start talking a little bit about him. He's a native of Akron or Akron, Ohio. He was a wrestler in high school and there developed his kind of love for one-on-one sports. And uh, that led him to starting attending a Kung Fu school at the age of 19. So he started rather later. But, and at 23, he opened his own uh, Kung Fu school in his hometown. And uh, you might not think it when you're watching this acting, but Bruce Lee acted as an inspiration. <laughs> uh, as well as, you know, a philosophy present in the David Carradine Kung Fu TV series. But the... Uh, you know, we'll get back to that because I want to single out the story of Ricky moment uh, that I call it and the Hong Kong stuntman moment in this scene because it's a neat little fight scene that is capped with, you know, the sort of the cha- another change in the movie's tone. You think there's a B-movie martial arts action going on here, but, you know, the change in movie's tone is going to both go into serial killer territory, but it also goes into gore territory. And, you know, you, you got a wonderful eagle's claw moment coming up here that I still call a story of Ricky moment because, you know what? You don't expect the eye gouging to happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> and look at that. There's a minor gore there. Oh, and there's the Hong Kong stamp. And dum, bum, 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 bum. Bang. Took that then. You know, and uh, so it's trying out exploitation and... Uh, also, which I like. It's a Hong Kong style. You know, you get mul- you know, many things in one. Multi-moods. Multi-moods. I love the multi-mood experience. But uh, going back to, to Don, and uh, the true change for him, according to the interview that Mike Fury, Fury conducted, was when he got blessed uh, with uh, being trained privately by Grandmaster Tai Yin, the executive producer of this movie, in the sh- southern Shaolin Hung Fu style. And... You know, after training and all that, he also tapped into the fact that martial arts was hitting it big on movies and all of that. So, Neon packed his bags and uh, had a few thousand dollars in his pocket and headed to L.A. And uh, his master tie-in was uh, at one time also in L.A. 
LA developing a project for a Hong Kong director to shoot. And this was the mention on the Ring Glory with uh, Cynthia Rothrock and uh, John Miller, who's in this scene as well. And uh, due to work commitments, we couldn't name the other stuff by the side when, uh, while trying to get his acting career going, he wasn't able to attempt to land a role on, in the project. But, uh, you know, he before getting undefeatable, he, he talks about, and he's very upfront and nicely balanced this, about how hard the business was, uh, how hard it is to break into the business, you know, and how the business can exploit you. F for instance, he said his audition tape for a Ten Commandments spoof movie with Lou Ferrigno ended up in the movie. And a short role of a professor in a Concord Pictures project turned out to be part of an erotic series in France. Wow. Uh, it was not like he did a porn scene or anything, uh, but in, in his own words, I didn't care. You know, move on. What are you going to do? You, you take the hit and move on. And uh, he can actually be seen with the mentioned Don Dragon Wilson briefly in Out for Blood, but it was this movie that has put him on the map and, you know, has forever, you know, will remain on the map. You know, uh, it's a classic movie and a classic performance, in my opinion. And his grandmaster, Tai Yim, was also developing Undefeatable with Godfrey Hope. And uh, Don's demonstration for director Ho landed him in the gig thanks to the, his physicality. I mean, he looks good today, look good then. And uh, he had good eyes, you know, intense eyes uh, that uh, Ho responded to. And he has good uh, skills uh, with uh, <laughs> putting, putting women in chains. At least uh, the character does. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, bring in the wonderful red, you know, the intense red of a Hong Kong movie, albeit. Yeah, where, where's movie. that coming from? Who cares? It's red, man. <laughs> you know, it would be wonderful if it was uh, blue. Oh, well, there's a little blue there as well. So the classic red and blue. And now the movie is trying out exploitation, an adults-only vibe, and doing it quite harshly. You know, it's not really fun. This, it's uh, you know, and it's gonna. This scene's gonna end on one piece of chain whipping. Yeah. It's fucking brutal, man. You know, and but this thing could have being even more brutal because uh, I think it's this thing that Don referenced in the interview that Godfrey Ho wanted uh, him to rape her in the chains but he actually talked Godfrey out of doing yet another rape scene and uh, they, they came to the agreement that another wasn't uh, needed so uh, you know what, might, might like they not like the character after that It'd be dead into the rape scene possibly mm. I'm glad, glad he actually turned around because I think you, you don't sympathize with the character really but you kind of rooting for him, right? It might be me. Uh, but just the well, way he's just yeah. his presence and just the way he kind of... Because you want to see him on screen. I think yeah. he's the most interesting part. So you kind of want to see more of him, what he's doing, even though his acting is terrible. But I think he's uh, he's likable in some weird way. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can see that. Yeah. It's a it, it's um it, <laughs> it, it, it's a stretch kind of to like... A, you know, to, to, when you say likable, like, how the hell is he likable? But I guess you know. <laughs> You know, yeah, just just it's just the uh, his, his kind of presence and his, his persona and stuff, mm. not what he does. <laughs> the discovery of the male body uh, that they saw prior—that is missing in the Hong Kong version. He cuts straight to uh, them discovering her in the uh, porta potty here, uh, which is not a totally bad cut. But um, you know, I, I now we know the fact that he you know he killed both, not and. Uh, the guy who uh, threw, he threw out of the parking garage as well, and obviously we know he killed him because, or at least, you know, gouged his eyes out. Or you know, obviously, so. Um, going back a little to Neam, while we try and not laugh at the extras and the football equipment that the main fighter is uh, going to <laughs> going to see here. <laughs> Uh, again, Don impressed uh, Godfrey Hope with, with his physicality and his intense eyes, and uh, you know, and Ho even encouraged the mullet to stay the way it was. <laughs> Good on him! What a wonderful Good choice! Good and uh, you know, he, he he was nervous, Don, and uh, yeah, as we said, he has 13 hours in the ring on uh, on the first day, second day a rape scene, but you know, hanging out with his uh, past friend, his uh, kung fu brother John Miller, and hanging out with uh, Cynthia and admiring her skill, in particular. Her, he admired her skill in picking up the choreography very quick. Again, she had a Hong Kong experience behind her at this point. That that was really inspiring. And uh, you know, via his stories, it, it's it's uh, it truly felt like the movie was done the Hong Kong way. You know, very loosely. You know, uh, changing on the spot, and uh, and you had to learn to sort of you know prep very quickly 
just go out and perform and do it right uh, quickly as well, you know. And 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 it looks like the performance.